Pastor Mike Philiber here with Heritage Presbyterian Church out on a camping trip at Hevener, Oklahoma. This is our last day. We're heading back this afternoon. And so it's beautiful outside right now. Well, we're here for morning prayer, and we are reading our way through Amos. You can see I have my Bible open. Reading our way through Amos, we are now at Amos 7. This is a very interesting chapter. There be two parts to it. The first part has three visions. The second part has to do with the interaction with someone whose patriotism has taken over the religion. Um, you'll hear as we get there. So Amos 7. This is what the Lord Yahweh showed me. Behold, he was forming locusts when the latter growth was just beginning to sprout. And behold, it was the latter growth after the king's mowings. When they had finished eating the grass of the land, I said, O oh Lord Yahweh, please forgive. How can Jacob stand? He is so small. Yahweh relented concerning this. It shall not be, says Yahweh. This is what the Lord Yahweh showed me. Behold, the Lord Yahweh was calling for a judgment by fire, and it devoured the great deep and was eating up the land. Then I said, O oh Lord Yahweh, please cease. How can Jacob stand? He is so small. Yahweh relented concerning this. This also shall not be, said the Lord Yahweh. This is what he showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And Yahweh said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall be, must go into exile away from this land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary. It is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. But Yahweh took me from following the flock, and the Lord and Yahweh said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore hear the word of Yahweh. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore thus says Yahweh, your wife shall be a prostitute in the city, and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword, and your land shall be divided up with a measuring line. You yourself shall die in an unclean land, and Israel shall go shall surely go into exile from its land. That was Amos chapter seven. And there again, as I said, you, you get the three whoops the wind blew me over, sorry. You get the you get the three visions and how merciful God is, and yet he cannot let it go on without stopping Israel's sin. And then you see the confrontation at the end with Amaziah, whose patriotism has taken over his sense of ultimate loyalty. It just gutted him so that he is all for the king and none for the true king of the universe. Very sad. Well, there we are. So we're going to pray, and as you know, we're using uh, our denominations, The Guardian, which is for uh, chaplains, uh, Reformed and Presbyterian chaplains throughout the military and throughout hospitals and stuff. We're praying for one today. We're also using Compassion or Nationals Prayer Guide, and then our own church's prayer guide. So let's pray. Lord God in heaven, we, uh, we know that you take us more seriously than we take you, and that you love us more deeply than we love you. And yet, as a good parent, as a good father, you cannot just let us go on, head, head downward, full steam ahead into our destruction. And so, Lord, thank you that you care enough about us to correct us. Help us not to be like Amaziah, to be so caught up in our patriotism to the point that we are blind to where our ultimate allegiance and loyalty should be. Lord, we pray that... Um, you would be with Colonel Ed Uris of the U.S. Army Special Operations Command, a chaplain there at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Thank you for the fact that he has um, committed himself to being a, a gospel chaplain, a Reformed and Presbyterian chaplain. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that um, 
he has many opportunities. And as he says, ministry in the military is most effective when commanders make it a priority. We pray that there would continue to be a priority um, that um, commanders would make it uh, an opening for their chaplains, good Christian chaplains, to uh, have uh, access to their troops. And uh, we pray, Lord, that you would bless Ed and his work and strengthen him. Lord, we pray for church planting in Oklahoma. Uh, what a great opportunity. And Oklahoma is a big state, not as big as Texas maybe, but it's a big state in so many ways. And uh, there is lots of opportunity for evangelism and planting churches. We pray that you would continue to strengthen our desire to plant churches and give us the funds and the people to do it. And may we see good, solid faithful, loyal congregations cropping up all over this state. Uh, Lord, we pray for Lee and Pam and that you would watch over them and, and uh, continue to keep them in good health, preserve them and protect them. Thank you for the fact that even in retirement, they seek to serve you with sower ministries and uh, pray that you would continue to, to, to uh, keep them in that good health so they can do that. Be with Daphne and Steve her husband, I pray that you would bless their relationship and that you would uh, be the God of their home and the God of their lives and that they would draw close to you all their days. I pray for Doug and Masha Shepard who are serving in Ukraine. Uh, Lord, continue to bless and keep them where they are there. May they know that you are with them and I pray that you would provide for them all the funds that they, they need and uh, opportunities. I pray for a young six-year-old, uh, Remy, in Rwanda. Lord, as he is going through chemotherapy, Lord, I pray that you would strengthen and help his family, comfort them, help him, Lord, that the treatment would be successful, the cancer would go in remission, and he would be back up on his feet. Uh, give him strength and give him courage. Lord, we pray for um, our denomination, the Presbyterian Church in America. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the desire of so many in this denomination to be faithful and loyal to you. We pray that you would uh, provide us with continued good leadership and um, many opportunities to prepare to share the gospel uh, with many and to uh, present the whole counsel of God and that our churches and our people would be fortified. All of our elders and deacons and pastors, Lord, um, bless this denomination, that it would have many, 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 many decades and even centuries of faithful, loyal service to you for the years to come. Lord, bless us this day. Keep us all safe and preserve and protect us as we go about the, the affairs of life that you have bestowed upon us. And may we remember that we live always, quorum Deo, we live always before the face of God. May we never forget that and uh, serve you with great joy and pleasure. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for hanging in there with me on in morning prayer. And, we, and I'll be back tomorrow. And hopefully I'll be back uh, if everything goes well. Travels and packing up and all that. Uh, I'll be back um, and kind of normal back at home. And so until tomorrow, receive the Lord's blessing from the words at the end of Ephesians. Peace be to the brothers and love with faith from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. Amen.